All right, everybody, good morning. Uh, welcome to Chat Ops for Distributed Teams, Fun and Profit. Uh, my name is Michael Sharon. I'm a technical architect for Acquia. Um, I've been a Drupalist for about six years. Uh, I was raised in small Drupal shops, so I'm familiar with uh, a lot of the problems that small shops have in terms of communication when they're working with folks that are distributed around the globe or uh, you know different states across the country, however you are distributed. Chris. Hi guys, my name is Chris Urban. I'm a delivery manager at Acquia. Uh, Michael and I worked on some projects together. Uh, my responsibility is more uh, in uh, overseeing, let's say, risk mitigation for larger projects uh, in terms of what is being delivered by our team. Um, my background is uh, project management, more, uh, much more technical. Um, I come from a marketing agency background, a lot of experience in digital strategy, pre-press, things like that, old school. So why chat ops? Uh, I, think I found this week in talking to folks about my session that this is a term that not a lot of folks are familiar with. So chat ops is using tools like Slack or HipChat or even IRC in order to integrate your teams and get them to use these tools in order to uh, accelerate their workflow, to facilitate communication. With that, communication. Right, so one problem we see very often with um, large teams and uh, on large projects, meaning multiple developer teams in multiple time zones, um, uh, just uh, getting everybody on the same page as a priority. Um, one, of the, uh, one of the first obstacles that we, we encounter is um, having everyone understanding exactly what's happening on a project at any given time. With the more people that are involved, the more information that needs to be conveyed and communicated, getting that into as much of a clear, concise format as possible is, is paramount. Um, next is having all of that information in one place that everyone has very easy access to. So it's quick to research, quick to find that answer. You know, I remember somebody was saying they were having an issue with this module, with this ticket. Where is that information being stored? Uh, last thing is any kind of ceremonies that you have, uh, if you're using Agile, uh, Scrum, or Kanban. Actually, quick show of hands, who here is using um, Agile or Kanban right now in their development process? Awesome. So if you're, let's say, using a two-week sprint or a continuous delivery model, um, you often have uh, ceremonies and meetings. You have to have all those, in, all those notes in one place. So these are some of the challenges we face the larger the teams get, right? If a small shop or a medium-sized shop with five to 10 developers on a project, it's easy to keep that communication streamlined. Three or four teams in multiple time zones, a development team in India, a development team in South America, a development team in Europe, a development team in Canada, a development team in the US, design in the Canada, QA in the US, all of these teams know, need to know what's going on. Uh, chat ops is also really great for team culture, right? When you have your developers and your QA and your product owners and they're distributed all over the globe, sometimes it's hard to get those disparate groups to coalesce as a team, right? And having a place where they can come together and they can share funny images, they can, you know, create GIFs, you can integrate chat bots with whatever tool you're using in order to give karma. So kind of like a, you know, like a Reddit concept uh, where people can upvote each other inside a, a Slack chat room and say, hey, you know, Mario's a great guy and he really helped me out with that project, so I'm going to give him karma points. And these points are totally arbitrary. I mean, they don't actually mean anything in the real world other than, hey, Mario's a great guy and he really helped me out and so now he has more points, right? Um, yeah, sharing funny things. It, it really does help to, you know, bring your teams closer together even though they don't share a, a physical space. Uh, another really awesome uh, thing that you can do with chat tools like Slack is integrating your continuous uh, integration system. How many folks in here use something like Jenkins or Travis or some other CI tool? Okay, awesome. So sometimes those tools tend to get ran in isolation, right? You have someone who's acting as a deployment manager and they are managing your builds. Uh, when those builds either complete or fail or if they trigger automated tests, it's very useful to have the results of that work being put out into a place where the entire team can see it, right? Often your, your you know, day-to-day -day, uh, you know, frontline developers don't have access to your continuous integration tool for security reasons, but it's useful for them to know what that tool is doing, right? 
right? Especially if your CI process is uh, sophisticated enough to where maybe it knows if a specific commit has failed. Um, you know, that developer would then realize, hey, this is, you know, potentially my commit that has a problem and now I can respond to it without having to be told, hey, your commit has a problem, right? So uh, Jenkins integration with Slack, uh, and this is just one example of, of integrating a, um, you know, a CI tool with a, a chat tool. Um, it really is super simple. I mean, if you've ever added plugins in Jenkins, this should be a very familiar process. You know, you just go in and, hold on, let me pause that. That's going real fast. Whoops. So, uh, right, so you just, you know, you have the plugin, it's super easy, uh, and then there's just some real basic configuration uh, you just need to add. Um, uh, there is a key that you get from Slack, and you add it into uh, Jenkins, right here. Uh, you get this integration token from logging into the Slack website for your team domain. Uh, you just give it the team domain, your API key, and what project channel you want this build to post into. Um, and you'll see there's several options for notifications that Slack can send. It can say, uh, it'll notify your team when the build is started, if it's aborted, if there's a failure, uh, if there's success, if it's unstable, meaning, you know, yeah, the build exited successfully, but maybe your tests failed, right? That's, that's a nice uh, thing to know. Uh, and then it can also include test summaries, right? So if you have BHAT wired up into your CI tool, which I think a lot of us probably do, um, it can actually output the results of your BHAT tests into a Slack channel so that your whole team can see what's happening. Uh, so <clears throat> there's also a really great community module called Slack, uh, and it allows you to, send, to have Drupal post information into a Slack channel. Um, it basically just exposes a very, very simple function called Slack send message. Um, you can define a default uh, channel that Slack will uh, send messages into, uh, but you can also, per instance, override that and have it send to really any channel in your team domain that you want, right? Um, and there's some, you know, some pretty uh, awesome use cases that you can have for this. Like, let's say, for example, you use workbench moderation, right? You have a, a group of editors who they will get content that's assigned to them after a new node has been created, but it's pending approval. This can then post into the editor's channel in your Slack team and let them know, hey, this new node is now available for you to review. Go ahead and pop in there and, and give it a look over. You can also do things like uh, commerce checkout. You know, if a, if a cart has been completed, go ahead and notify some people. You could have like a, a DevOps channel and you know, let your team know when cron runs have completed, that kind of stuff. Again, this is super simple to set up. Uh, you just you log into the Slack uh, admin panel for your uh, team domain and uh, just grab that webhook URL. Um, and you can customize uh, the name, you can set a special icon, you know, so it looks cool inside your Slack, you know, you can give it a funny robot icon or something, whatever you want to do, right? And then you just slap that bad boy into Drupal, give it whatever default channel that you want uh, Slack to usually post into, but then, like I mentioned, with that Slack send message function, you can override that and send it to any arbitrary channel that you want to. Um, you can define if you want it to have an emoji for an avatar. I mean, there's all kinds of fun stuff that you can do, right? Just to make it clever and, and cool for everybody. And I will show an example of sending a message from Drupal into Slack. They have a little test uh, dashboard there, so you can just say, hey, hello, New Orleans. And it will then post that over to my Slack channel. Thumbs up, yay, hello New Orleans. I mean, it's really simple, it, it doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, there's that Slack send message uh, function that I mentioned. Uh, you can give it, you, know, you don't have to even send what channel you want it to go to, it'll use the default, you can just send any message string and it'll just post it to your default channel, which I think is nice. Uh, I also created a uh, community module that uh, right now is a sandbox. We're waiting to get it uh, promoted to a full module, and this allows the opposite, right? Um, the current Slack module allows you to send uh, information from Drupal to Slack, but there wasn't anything to go in the other direction, right? And I noticed in the, uh, just in the Slack world, there's tons of really fun bots, right? Uh, but they're all running in Heroku apps or Ruby apps or, you know, some, some other interface, right? And so why wouldn't it be, why wouldn't we build chat ops with, or chat bots with Drupal, right? So I created a community module called Slack Receive, 
and it basically exposes a, uh, um, a menu hook, or excuse me, a, a, a a menu callback that allows you to post information from Slack into Drupal, and then Drupal will uh, do whatever you want with it. Uh, you can build Drupal-powered Slack bots, you can run Drush commands, which uh, you know, I, I uh, imagine the use case where you needed to clear cache really quickly and you're, you're not near a computer, you don't want to have to SSH into the server and run a Drush command, you could actually do it from your phone using the Slack app, right? Um, you could check module statuses, you could check or set variables in Drupal 7. Right now there's only a Drupal 7 release. Uh, once I get it promoted, I'm going to do a Drupal 8 port uh, and go from there. One caveat though is that you're basically, expo you're basically making Slack uh, as an interface for the Drupal shell, right? And so you, you really want to make sure that you're escaping any input that you're taking from Slack before you're running it on a command line, right? And I'll show some examples of that. So here's the sandbox page for it right now. Super exciting. We all know what sandbox pages look like. Uh, again, you just use an outgoing webhooks uh, integration in Slack. Uh, you get a handful of these for free. So this is, you know, and you could, all the stuff that I'm describing, you don't have to pay for, uh, for on Slack, which is really great. The only thing that you need to pay for Slack for is to have history that's uh, recorded indefinitely. Hmm. Yeah, again, so you uh, just need to grab the key which they generate there. Uh, you need to put in the, the menu hook uh, URL there, uh, or the menu callback <laughs> URL there, and uh, what word you want your bot to trigger on. So when you type into Slack Drushbot and you pass it in the command that I'll show you how to set up later, uh, then Drupal will respond and send in whatever you want it to. There's the key, super exciting. You can set your little icon there. You can uh, you know, upload whatever you want, give it a cool name. So I create a, a, an a, admin panel to set the API key inside Drupal. Uh, here is Slack receive. Um, like I said, just create a menu callback. Uh, there is user access control on it. I'm actually changing this right now so that it will uh, the, the version that I have up right now doesn't tell you what the status code is, so if it's a success, it's, not a, it's, it's always a 200. Even if site's offline, it's always 200. I'm changing that so that it'll actually give you meaningful status codes. But um, Oops. Whoops. Skip ahead, sorry about that. Oh wait, this no, is the wrong one. There we go. Sorry guys. Right, so here is an example of, uh, basically I create a, web, uh, create a custom hook that you can implement in your own module, uh, and then I also create a, a, an example module that shows some very simple implementations of Slack Receive. Uh, it just gives two examples where you can, uh, you can list what modules you have currently installed, and you can pass in a string and it'll, it'll then grab the, the modules list uh, uh, command from uh, Drush and then return those modules, and you can also clear cache. Um, note, This is important. So when you get down into this git pm, so this is the uh, sample command where it will list out the current installed modules with Drush. So notice the use of uh, escape shell command and escape shell args. Uh, basically that is taking the input that's coming over from the Slack uh, um, string command and escaping it so that you couldn't do things like you know, rm-rf and completely delete your directory and other security uh, problems. So when you're implementing Slack Receive, I highly recommend using those commands to make sure that you're sanitizing user input. Same deal with clearing cache. Just escape the input that you're getting back. And so now I'll show an example of actually sending the command, so we're going to do a cache clear, reviews, and so Drushbot says, yep, views cache is cleared. And then we'll do a PM list for the Twitter module, and it tells you what version of the Twitter module is installed, whether it's enabled, et cetera, right? 
So just, I mean, these are just, you know, examples that show what's possible with it. Um, BeerBot is an actual uh, a bot that you can download now. It's not powered by Drupal, but this is a good example of the kind of thing that you could do, right? You could uh, set up a bot and pass in a string for the name of a beer or a movie or something, right? And it would then return, in this case, beers, you know, and what the alcohol rating is and, and some, some user rating data, right? So you could, you could do some pretty cool stuff with this, right? Like you could have, you know, like a Giphy type implementation where you have a bunch of, you know, GIFs that are stored in Drupal and if you send in a certain key, it'll then fetch that GIF and display it in your Slack channel or I don't, you could do all kinds of fun stuff. Oh, great, so this is me. Okay, so, um, we mentioned before, now we've got the tools with Slack um, to get information back and forth to Drupal. What about everybody who's working on this project? How do we keep them all on track and on point? So one of the key things in a agile workflow are the ceremonies and the most probably most important one of those is the daily scrum call. So first question here, who uh, uses a daily scrum call? And who here has a daily scrum call that is more than 10 minutes, more than 15 minutes, more than 20 minutes? You get my point. So scrum calls are meant to be quick updates, um, primarily focused on the issues that need resolution, questions that need answering, blockers that need unblocking. And if you have a lot of developer teams on that phone call, it'll take a long time before you find out that important information. You do want to know what everybody's working on, you want to know what they're planning to work on, but you really want to know, what do you really, really want? You really want, sorry. <laughs> I had to get the obligatory It's the second time today he's made that joke. <laughs> it's this lobster claw in front of me, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's important to, uh, to be able to get that important information out. So. In order to get that phone call down to a reasonable amount of time and still be able to convey all the information that needs to be conveyed, we use a Slack bot called Howdy. Um, Howdy is online at howdy.io and it's a plugin, another integration that you can connect with Slack. It's really, really simple. Um, the original premise of the bot, believe it or not, same kind of fun we were having earlier, was to collect lunch orders. What does everybody want to eat for lunch, right? So they wrote a little tool in Slack, it pulls everyone asynchronously, and they realized this would be a great use uh, case for a scrum call. So what you do is are, you basically gather all the information from all your developers. You can set up whatever kind of custom questions you want. You can do traditional what was I working on? What am I working on today? Do I have any blockers? Do I have any questions that need answering? Um, and you specify the, t the duration that they have to answer, um, but all that information is collected and then posted in a channel in Slack. So then, if you do this right, let's say your scrum call is at 10 a.m., set this to run at 9.30, you give everybody half an hour to respond. Before you actually go into the scrum call, it'll post the results in the Slack channel. Everybody sees what everybody's working on. There's no issues of communication. Hey, that you know Skype call dropped out. I didn't hear what you said. It's text-based. It's nice and short and sweet. And doing this, we've cut the time on those scrum calls to half or even a third of that original 20 minutes. All right, so just to show how this works, so from with, uh, within um, Slack, once you've had the Howdy bot uh, set up, right, the same way you go into, did I pause it? Yeah, the same way you go into the integrations uh, panel in your Slack, if you go to Howdy, once you're logged into Slack, it'll just say allow, to be, allow Howdy to connect to your Slack team. Once it connects, you just go in and say, hey, I wanna train Howdy to run my Scrum. You give it a name. You give it the questions you want it to ask. So what I put in here, what did I work on yesterday? What am I working on today? It's coming a little fast, let me back this up. Oh, there we go. Right, so uh, what did I work on yesterday? What am I working on today? Do you have any blockers? And that's it. And you can tell it how long to wait. 15 minutes, an hour, eight hours. Actually, it used to be eight hours and they upped it to 72 because some people don't do daily check-ins. They may do it every two or three days. I don't want to wait for three days, but you get the idea. 
So you're allowed then, um, what will happen is Howdy will come back and say, um, would you like to test it? You can say yes or no. It'll basically test it on you. I know this will work, so I don't need to do it. But what it does tell you then is um, how to fire it, right? You tell it to point that command to somebody specifically or to somebody in a channel. And then you can schedule it. Do I want it to run automatically? You could put in here to say run it at 8 a.m. or whatever time you want. So now, oops, I went too fast. I'll click on the trigger. See, if I had those lobster claw mitts on, I wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> All right, so as soon as, let's see if I did that right. Okay. How do I get that thing to disappear? Does it go away? Okay. So now, once I want this to run, I just say, howdy, run Scrum General, and you'll see up at the top, the notification kicks in, and it's polling everybody in the channel. Hey, do you have time to talk? Yeah, okay, what did you work on yesterday? I worked on my DrupalCon presentation. What am I working on today? How do I get that to go away? And do you have any blockers? And of course I say, yeah, I'm running out of beer. Um, and then it says, okay, done. And then you'll see a notification back in the general channel. In the meantime, Michael's answered his questions and it posts it all in the main chat. It also logs it online. So all those notes are recorded and archived. So you can go back to the scrum call from three months ago and find out what everybody was working on. So if you need to have documentation uh, traceability of what everybody was working on on some date, now you have it automatically cataloged. All right. Now, there are some catches, right? There's always a, there's always a hook or claw, sorry. All right. So um, you can use <laughs> Don't look at me like that. <laughs> you can use the stock questions, which is basically what I typed in, or you can make them very, very specific. So do you have an issue for the legal team to review? Do you have items that the design team needs to review? Whatever those are, you can set those up. Um, you're able to specify the timing. So maybe you have developer teams, let's say, in Israel that are not working on Friday. You turn off Friday and put on Sunday. Um, if you wanted to fire it at a certain time, you can go online and set it there, or you can do it all from the um, command line in Slack. Um, you can split it up. You can give one team one set of questions and another team another set of questions. Have them both post into it the same channel. You know, that's kind of nice if you have segmented teams. The most important factor here is that of all the other bots that we looked at, this one allows for asynchronous reporting. The other ones that we've run and tested they are basically a with a for loop, and if one developer doesn't answer, the rest of the loop doesn't run. So you're stuck because developer number three of 12 hasn't answered. We never find out about developers four, five, and six, and so on. In, in Howdy, at the end of the time slot, you'll get a list that says, you know, developer A, B, and C did not respond. So that automatically gives you a list to say, hey, I need to go talk to those devs and find out what they're working on. Why are you not responding? Are you dead? What's going on? You know. All right, so uh, a couple of things. If you are on a large scale project where you're using enterprise Slack, remember uh, Michael mentioned it's free, but if you wanna keep a history, you're gonna pay for the enterprise model. In that model, you have permission levels on the users assigned. In order to view this information on the web, they have to have full access. So a restricted user cannot see this. So if you have a partner scrum master that's on with restricted permissions, they need to be promoted to full access. So that might be an issue for some uh, clients. Um, and this, I have to update this. They just changed this. It used to be only an eight hour update. They've updated it, like I said, to 72 hours. So if your scrum calls are every third day, that will work. Um, and that's it. Uh, there was, this was an issue and they've resolved it. Some developers would get stuck answering a question. There was some latency issue. Uh, they seem to have fixed it, so not a blocker. All right, so, uh, so because you don't need to take pictures, we're gonna post all this. All the links to everything that we talked about here um, are right here, um, so anything you want to look into further, um, it's all here, we'll post the PDF on the, oh, um, yeah. on the session page, it's already there. So, thank you very much. We have time for questions, if anybody wants to ask questions. Mm -hmm. Have you done anything with triggering Jenkins jobs from Slack? 
No. Um, there, actually, I, I know there's a couple of Slack plugins that I haven't touched, um, and I would be really interested to see if that works. Um, I, I would just be concerned about security, right? Just making sure that somehow you're going to be able to correlate the user that's requesting, that's making the request in Slack with a user that actually has access in Jenkins. And I could, I could see that being kind of tricky. But um, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody solved it. Yeah, our, so we're using GitHub authentication for Jenkins. Sure. So that was kind of a stumbling block, or so far it's been a stumbling block figuring that out. But my um, thought was, you talked about triggering like cron or, and Drupal operations from Slack. Right. But Right. So on the project that I'm on right now, we have, uh, in addition to, to using Slack, we're also, um, we have the GitHub plugin for Jenkins running. So when a developer makes a, a pull request against the current active develop, uh, development branch, when that pull request is merged, uh, Jenkins will automatically deploy it out to our dev, QA, and testing environments uh, in Acquia Cloud. Um, and then that process all gets notified inside Slack, which is nice, right? Um, very rarely do we have integration problems, but if we did, we would know about it because of what's going into Slack. So that's that's a nice thing. How long have you been using for Could you say the question again? I think we started uh, testing it. Yeah, we started testing it in October, November, um, and I think we put it into full gear probably about the around Christmas, so since January. So has this replaced entirely the actual calls? Oh, no, so that's the thing. The idea is that once you get that summary posted into Slack, uh, here we go, once you have that summary list posted, we set it up to be timed so that this is posted five, 10, 15 minutes before the actual call. So then what we end up focusing on on the call are the real issues, the blockers, and we phrase those in the question. So first thing to do is to look through, what I would do is look through the blockers section first, identify those as my priorities that I need to get resolved. Once we go through those, or there, if there isn't any, then you can now go to the next tier, which is what are we working on? What are we planning on working on? Is there any potential blockers? So I think it depends on the phrasing of the question. But if you time it that way, then you have this posted into the main chat and then on the phone call, you focus on what those questions or issues are. If the summary is sufficient enough to say, yep, I'm working on ticket you know, one, two, three, I don't have any blockers, I, you don't need to talk, right? You actually don't even need to be on the call. The possibility is, I mean, we still everybody want to have everybody on the call because there's a possibility there may be something else that depends on that person. You know, it's important to have participation, but they don't have to say anything, we can skip right over them. If your if your scrum calls are anything like ours, they used to be, you know, 15 minutes of people saying, "Well, yesterday I worked on Project X and nobody cares, and today I'm working on Thing Y and nobody still cares." So just eliminating that section alone, where it's literally just the only thing that we're actually spending time talking about, is problems that require collaboration, and that is a game changer, I think. Yeah. Uh, one other thing, uh, you know, the standard model is, you know, what was I working on yesterday? What am I working on today? What am I planning on working on tomorrow? Do I have any blockers? Another one you can add is um, uh, an after. Uh, this was one thing we heard from a small boff section. So it's a specific request to have a couple of minutes with a product owner or another developer right on the call because we know everybody is on the call. So you could put in another question to say, do you need, do you need a minute after the call? And since you're, everybody's already there, this is a quick way to say, yeah, I just have a quick question. You know, Give me a minute at the end of the call. So this way, everybody can see what's going on. Do you have any insight into the pricing of consumer? I look out right now there are free data. Free. It's open. It's a public beta. So I suspect the typical model would be they would give you what you're getting right now, which is a lot. I think it's, a, it's plenty of... Uh, uh, plenty there to begin with, but the premise was to have another enterprise model where maybe what they're keeping or the logging that they're keeping uh, track of is going to be limited unless you pay a licensing fee. In most projects, you know, I really don't need to go back to a scrum call from three weeks ago. It's done. Um, I need the last week 
that's it. I can imagine that they would add some more filtering or other functionality as some sort of premium model. But as of right now, there isn't one. It's free. So. Uh, n I don't know yet. I can, I'll find out. That's a good question. Yep. They're really, really responsive. Actually, one of the guys from there was supposed to be at DrupalCon. I just realized. I should have asked him. Oh. Um, so if you have distributed teams, do you, uh, is there any scope for having distributors as Scrum boards? Like, one thing I can think of is, for, we have a team in the US and India, and so the question would really be, what did you do today? Right. Yeah, your today, not ours. Yeah, so yeah. Well, but that—that that was the idea. You could, you can just, you could run the same chat, um, but in segments of teams. You can manually go in and assign, you know, uh, developer A, B, and C get this Scrum set of questions, but they're going to get it at 9 a.m., and then the U.S. team will get it at uh, 12 p.m. or you know whatever the corresponding times are. Um, that's actually a little trick. Um, I recommend making sure the time zone settings in your Slack are correct because you can change it and sometimes if you're working on a client, let's say, who's in New York but you're based in LA, you're thinking LA time zone, of course, so just double check. <laughs> We've had it where it runs at 3 in the morning, nobody's getting the, the scrum questions. But you know, the idea is that you could run it in, in concurrently in the same channel. So you know, these devs get the question in their time zone. Uh, typically, for India teams, we would try to do it at the end of the day so that it'll be the morning of when we're doing the Scrum call in the U.S. So it is kind of Scrum of Scrums-ish, but not really. But it's, it's a good way of doing it. Yeah, and to add another point to his question, um, we're using Shoebot. Mm -hmm. Yep. So actually, the beer bot here. This is my Hubot, and it's I'm hosting it. So it's not um, we just modified, but it's a real basic, you know, API call, and you can customize it to no end, right? But yeah, same principle. Thanks. Okay, so um, I'd answer that maybe on two levels because one is the fact that we're on Slack to begin with. Um, and I think that by itself, um, having everybody on the common team and the flexibility for setting up uh, custom rooms or channels specific to the issues that the developers are working on makes it very easy. Uh, prior to Slack, we were on Skype and it's, uh, it's a bit clunkier, basically. Um, so that's one. Um, I think just having that um, as a very easy means of communication across the team by itself is already, uh, let's say, an order of magnitude more efficient or easier to communicate. But with that, there's a catch. Um, and this was always a challenge. Uh, and it's not really specific to Howdy, let's say, but it's just a matter of how the projects are set up in general. One of the things I always advocate for is making sure there's clear, concise communication. One of the other pillars that go alongside it is documentation. You can have all the communication in the world, but if nobody's like logging that or concisely editing and posting that information in a place that everybody can get to, it doesn't do us any good. You'll spend an hour searching through Slack for the information you're looking for. So as long as you're following good documentation uh, strategies, uh, making sure you know everything in your workflow is outlined, making sure everyone understands their roles and responsibilities, um, then that dovetails with using something like Slack or Howdy. Uh, so why I'm saying this, in Howdy we have this Scrum report that's being generated. We would still be logging, let's say, in a Google Doc or a, a Confluence page, those daily meeting notes um, just to have it because there are other people that are not in that Slack channel but want to see what the progress is on their ticket. Um, the next thing I think would be to find a way to hook this back into JIRA, which we're using for ticket tracking, which you can do and we haven't gone to yet. So any kind of specific reporting or questioning on a ticket is automatically associated with the ticket's comments in JIRA. This is the big 
question, right? Because you'll have a scrum call. Hey, I'm stuck on ticket one, two, three. Uh, do you have time to talk? Well, I can't talk on the phone right now, but can you just ping me in Slack in an hour? I'll be free. Okay. Now you have a conversation in Slack with the product owner about the ticket. It may be in the general channel, but you know, an hour later, it's a back scroll. You don't know that it's there. No, you don't remember that it's there. Getting that morsel of information back into the Jira ticket, that's the key thing. So that would be the caveat. That was a really long answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> that, does, that, does that help? Uh, Didn't we have a number, like how much we reduced the amount of time, so like 60% or something? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, so I was on the team at the desk end, and I used to lock how long. This is a running joke with us. And and it's not, it's not just, uh, quantitative, it's qualitative. The fact that you're spending half an hour on a droning scrum call is not the way to spend your morning, right? So everyone scrum comes, rage. yes, <laughs> scrum rage, exactly. So it's like, God damn it, you know? And the first time we started doing this, uh, let me tell you, there was like, that was the rage on the slacks for us, like, oh my God, Scrum was less than 10 minutes today. You know, that's a mile, it's a huge milestone. So that like emotional burden, the fact that Scrum shouldn't be a burden, it should be a check-in and keeping it objective and not an emotional ceremony, that that's something I don't think you can put a number on. Cool. Okay, thanks everybody. menu hook. <laughs>